Hi, I'm Steph from the BMW DIY Guy, and do you want to know how to change out those flimsy plastic charge pipes in your, in your BMW S58 motor? I'll show you how. All right, so let's talk about this project a little bit before we do it and the reasons why you may want to do this yourself. Now, BMW from a, a number of years now have been putting in plastic charge pipes, and those are the pipes that come from the cold side and hot side of your turbo. Now, if you're running stock, you're running OEM, the chances of breaking them are fairly small, but they do and can break even in stock setups. Now, I think BMW has put them in because of relatively low failure rate and they save a little bit on weight, though I, I, I doubt they really save all that much. But if you plan on driving your car a little bit harder or you plan on tuning your car, you should absolutely change out your charge pipes. Now, the hot and cold side charge pipes in an S58 is a little bit more of a complicated project, but I'm gonna walk you through every single step along the way so you can easily follow along and do this work yourself. Now, one of the very first things we're gonna do is put the car in the air because we actually have to drain out all of the coolant. <laughs> So I'm always gonna say this, guys, if you watched my videos before, um, I've got quick jacks, I absolutely love them. Make sure to check out my videos on those. But anytime you get your car up in the air, be absolutely careful, okay? So if you're using jacks and jack stands, which you can do, don't bet your life on a 50 cent part in your jack, make sure that you use jack stands. If your car comes down, that's a big bummer. If you're underneath it, that's a, that's a really big bummer, right? So make sure to do this safely on level ground with jacks and jack stands or quick jacks, which I highly recommend. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the car up in the air, and I'm gonna show you all the plastics we need to take off from underneath the motor to drain out the coolant. All right, so before you get started, I wanna show you a little trick that I do. There are so many bolts and pieces that you're going to be taking out, that unless you're really familiar with the projects, it could be easy to forget which ones are, which ones they are by the time you come to take it out. So what I've done is I've laid everything out just basically on, on paper towels, with notes. This is exactly where this came from. So I'm not looking for it later. I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm really well organized and then I know exactly all of my parts. So just a suggestion as you move forward. All right, so let's start into the car here and we're gonna to orient to all of the, the 10 millimeter screws we're gonna to have to take off to take all of the plastics off. So there's a whole series of them as we go around. So you can see here, here, all the way down this entire line, all the way around to the other side. They also come down the center piece here and here. You're also gonna to wanna to take off the two on each side, 10 millimeters here and here. They're all the same screws here and here that secure these plastics uh, to your underbody tray as well. Now, in addition, there are two uh, 10 millimeters here and here in each wheel well. You could potentially take your tire off if you wanted to. Um, I don't see any reason if you just reach up and, and just take these out, to take all these trays out, okay? So I'm a big fan of an impact wrench, so go ahead and just use that in a 10 millimeter socket and get all these off. Um, I'm gonna walk through all of them and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so looking at driver's side, you can tell all the plastics are off now. All the way across, I'll walk through it here really quickly. It's actually three screws on the side, one, two, and three back here in that corner to drop that corner piece out. But there's kind of an L shape, or U-shaped piece that goes here in front. So that one comes off first, and then there's all of the 10 millimeters down the nose, and then the center piece drops out with all of the 10 millimeters keeping that on, and then these corner wings will come out with the 10 millimeters across front and these three across the back, and it'll all drop out. Now, do be careful. You probably have a lot of gravel. I mean, my car's only got 3,000 miles on it, and I'm amazed at the amount of gravel that came out. So just, just be careful you don't get anything in your eye. All right, so go ahead and get all that and set that safely aside, and we're gonna move on from there. All right, so the last bit of plastics you're gonna to wanna to remove are these back back here on the back side of, of your uh, main tray. Again, 10 millimeters all the way down. So pull them all the way down this edge, feed this out, and there's one on each side. Then we're gonna to get to the braces underneath, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So go ahead and remove these last two pieces of underbody plastic. So once those last bits of uh, body plastic are off, now um, you may be a little bit tight if you're using a quick jack like me, there's two screws that are probably gonna be covered by your quick jack. You can just use a ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench to easily get at those two 10 millimeter body screws. Now you've got a whole series of 16 millimeter bolts and, and you have two all the way back in the corner back here. So you've got two on these arms and all the way around the perimeter uh, of the stiffening plate itself, all the way around. Now, what I normally do is I will do the perimeter. I will do the two corners. I'll come all the way around the perimeter because the center ones here and here will help hold this in place because it can be a little bit heavy. So if you're doing this by yourself, I will do all the way around the perimeter first, take all those off, 
and then I can brace it up while I, I take off the remaining two and then drop the stiffening plate. Okay, so go ahead and take all those off and take this off next. All right, so as you can tell, the stiffening plate is off, so now we want to drain the coolant. Uh, keep in mind that with the stiffening plate, those wings back in the corner, they can be a little bit hard to get to if you're not up on jacks. Uh, I just used a 60 millimeter on an extension and a wobble and was able to get to them just fine. If they're super stiff on you, you can go ahead and use a breaker bar just to, just to get them loose, um, and then you can use your impact wrench. So now, we're looking over here at the passenger side, we're looking at, this, at the secondary radiator right here. We've got our coolant connection right here that's got one of those little uh, like wire style uh, hooks on it. You just, wanna, you just wanna reach in and pull the pin on that out and then back this off. And, and you're gonna wanna have a bucket or something similar to catch all of the coolant that's, gonna, that's going to come out. So I'm gonna do both sides. You do the passenger side first and then go ahead and do the driver's side and pull these connections and get all of your coolant out. All right, you can probably still hear my coolant draining. But to save time, so I, I'm not just sitting and waiting for that to get done, and my car is still in an elevated position because once we get all the coolant drained, you can lower it back down to make it easier to work in the engine bay. But for now, you're gonna wanna take your engine brace off. If you have the factory engine brace, you've got a series of 15 millimeter nuts all the way around. I have the Keys Motorsports one, which is similar. Now also, if you're following this with a G80 or an M2 for that matter, so an M3, M4, or an M2, there's a little bit of space difference. In the M2s, your plastics come down and partially cover uh, the nuts here of your brace. On the G80s, it doesn't. So go ahead and pull those out to get your engine brace off. Then go ahead and pull your engine cover off. All right, so go ahead and get that done while we wait. All right, y'all. So car's back on the ground as, as the coolant's all drained out, so we're good to go there. Now, we're gonna wanna take our intakes out. I have aftermarket MST intakes, so that's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, if you have the factory intakes, they're held in by uh, rubber posts on each side, so you just un you loosen the worm drive on this side and then lift the whole box out. Same thing here, you you loosen the worm drive down at the bottom by the turbos and lift the whole box out. Mine's gonna be a little bit different because I need to, to take out the screws that help hold it down into place. And there's also clips at either end. But take your, take your air boxes out next. All right, next up will be this front plastics. So go ahead and just take your, your rubber trim here. Go ahead and just pull that off entirely, just like that, so it's safely aside. Then you have a whole series of those plastic rivets down this nose here. So go ahead and pull one, two, three, four, pull those out, pull this plastic piece, set it aside. Okay, so now that that plastic piece is off, we're gonna be taking, taking the, the kind of this radiator support brace off, which, you know, hey, if you're planning on upgrading it, this might be a good time to do it. But uh, first thing you wanna do is pull the cover over here on your, uh, this is your hood cable pole. So you pull the cover and you're gonna to wanna to unhook this, which will loosen this up. Then, as we, will, as we look around, we're gonna pull a series of T40s. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, T30s. So go ahead and pull all those out. And then these should be 13 millimeters. One, two, three, four, five, six, right across the top. We're gonna to get all of those. Now, there's some pop clips here in the front that we're gonna to have to get to, but go ahead and take, take your hood latch, uh, pull off, Go ahead and pull your T40s, go ahead and pull your T30s and your 13 millimeters, and then we'll deal with this front edge, and then we'll take this brace off. All right, y'all, so a couple of quick additions, we almost have this brace out. So first of all, there actually is a fourth T40, it's right here. If you take out the T30, which gives this a little bit of wiggle room, you can kind of pull this up and over to the side, and you can get to that T40 that's directly underneath it. Now, they're difficult to see, but right here, you should see the head of one of those typical BMW expanding plastic rivets, you know, with the plastic post in it, like you took out on that plastic trim piece across the top here. There's one, two, three, four. They're a little bit hard to get to. So what you're gonna have to do is get a tool in here. Um, I'm gonna use a plastic trim tool to, to get in because I don't want to scrape anything up and back, back the heads out of those pins. And once those out, once those pins are out, you can work and you can get this piece up and under uh, your, hood, your hood latch cable and go ahead and take it out and set it aside. All right, so once you have that cover off, you're gonna to wanna to take this main support bar off. You're gonna take the 13 millimeter bolt here out in the middle. And then down here at the ends, you have E18s, one, two, three, four, and they're pretty tight. You may need either a longer handled wrench or maybe even a breaker bar to get these to turn. Now, the other advice is you might wanna mark where these sit in these brackets. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take and, and mark the circles of where these bolts sit. So when I put them back, they sit back, right back in the exact same position, okay? But go ahead and take that 13 out and go ahead and take uh, the, the E18s off the ends. 
All right, once you have those bolts out, you actually have a wiring harness that's here on the back side of your core support bar. They're just on little plastic clips, so you can use a plastic trim tool to back those out. And then you've got one, two, three, four T30s that, that are holding your hood le locking mechanisms in place. Go ahead and take those out, one, two, three, four, and once these wiring harnesses off, you can take your core support bar out and set it aside. All right, now that all that's off, we're gonna be start pulling some hoses. So you've got your overflow radiator hose right here. Now, if your car's new, which this one is, this shouldn't be fragile, but keep in mind, older cars tend to be really fragile. So all of these hoses have the same kind of horseshoe clips on them where you hook underneath and you pull up on the clip and then it should work its way right off. They are, sometimes it can be really tight like this one, right? But you're gonna to wanna to work this off, pull it out of its clips like that, and then you can just take this and bend it up and set it aside. Next thing we're gonna do is pull our top radiator hose. There's a horseshoe clip right here, but you wanna start with the smaller ones first. Pull the, pull the clips on both of the smaller ones here and here, detach those, detach the top, detach the bottom. Go ahead and pull out your top radiator hose and set it aside. Okay, so next you wanna reach down and you want to uh, disconnect the lower radiator hose right here. Same thing, horseshoe clip, pull up on it. While you're here, go ahead and pull up on this red tab and go ahead and disconnect the, the radiator connection and then disconnect your overflow hose and take that and set, that, set all of that aside. So catching up a little bit, so there are one, two, and three uh, T30 screws, you take those out, and then you can lift your fan shroud up off those clips. You have to wiggle it past the post a little bit, past the hoses a little bit, but it will fit up and out. So go ahead and take that out and set it aside. Now you can see the bottom part of your engine brace down here. You can see all the way down at the bottom. You see a 16 millimeter and a 16 millimeter bolt down there at the very end of the brace. You'll want to take this hose and unclip it. It's on a plastic post, so go ahead and just, again, take your plastic trim tool, pull it off the post, go ahead and pull both of those 16 millimeter bolts, and go ahead and take this out. Now, you should be able to reach it from above. Worst case scenario, you could put the car back up in the air if you had to and get at it from underneath. All right, now, so now that all that's out, we can get to the auxiliary water pump right here. So there's a hose on top with one of these ratcheting clips. You're gonna wanna unhook the clip to pull this hose up and out to give us a little bit more room. There's also a 10 millimeter nut right here we're gonna to wanna to take off and then pull the water pump up off its bracket, which is gonna give us more room to get to the sensors that are actually in the charge pipes. We're not removing it, we're, we're just getting it up and out of the way. So go ahead and just take that off really easily. <clears throat> and then we'll have to undo, like I said, undo the clip for the hose and pull up it up and out of the way, which I don't have off yet, but we'll get that done. And then we're gonna pull the water pump up and off its bracket as well. All right, next up are the uh, two of four of the 10 millimeter uh, bolts that hold on the charge pipe. So right here and right here, they're kind of hard to see on camera. They're a lot easier because you can move your head around and you can actually see those. So go ahead and take both of those out next. Okay, so let me slowly walk this in so you can see where we are in the car because we need to disconnect the temperature and map sensor off of the Y pipe. And so as we come down, Remember how we moved the water pump out of the way to give us a little bit more room. So as we look down in here, I'm gonna use my screwdriver to point. You can look right down in there and you can see down low, let me reach under, there we go, right there. You should be able to see the, the connectors right there and they have those little white tabs on them. So you wanna very gently, so on this one, push the white tab back very gently you should have heard a little bit of a click so that that means that plug will be loose now and now the plug that's right here actually has our back to us so if you so if you get your head up and over on this side you could use an angled pick and very gently pull up on the tab here on the cabin side of the plug right here so once you have both of those disconnected you can back both plugs off all right i've got a better look at the sensors now and as you can see the water pump right there that's the feed to the top of the heat exchanger. So I went, went ahead and pulled that to give myself a little bit more room. You can see both sensors are off now. Now they are very, very tight. So be really patient, pull up those locking tabs, but then if you can pinch the top right where the locking tab is, you pinch the top, which releases a little internal lever inside the, inside the plug, which helps you get it up and out of place. They are really tight. This took me a little bit of time to get them done, especially that top one. But I was able to get it done. I just had to be patient and give myself a little bit more room so I could get my hands on them. So just be really careful as you do it because the last thing you want to do is pull one of those plugs or damage one of those sensors. 
All right, so next up, we're here back here on the passenger side. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here that's holding the pipe onto the back turbo. So you just want to back that out. And then once you have this bolt out, there is one of those very familiar wire kind of horseshoe, horseshoe uh, clips here on the back of where the pipe comes up and connects to your turbo. So go ahead and pull that into the open position. And then we're gonna do the same over on, on the Y pipe on this side. And then that pipe's gonna be loose and we're gonna be able to take it out. But to so go ahead and disconnect, there's one here, there's one here, and we're gonna work our way around. All right, so quick tip uh, here in a partially out state. So you can see that the t pipe is off the turbo, but it's still connected into all the rest. So there actually is a clip right there in the middle that connects the, the inlet pipe to the elbow. So I loosened that as well. Now, the other thing I tend to do on these clips is they really like to always snap back into place. You think you have it locked out, you're good to go, and it snaps right back in. These are held in by these little metal fingers. So what I'll usually do is I'll grab one of the arms and I'll back it out. Now, if we were gonna reuse these clips, we can easily put it back in place and they'll still work. If we're not gonna reuse them, it doesn't matter as much. But that gives us enough room to slowly work this pipe back till it pops free the turbo, and then it's here, and now we can separate it from the elbow. That'll be, make it easier to get the rest of the section off of the Y pipe. All right, so go ahead and get those two out. All right, so once you get the intake out and the elbow out, which is the top elbow, you can see underneath that the bottom elbow right here is a short pipe that goes through and you've got another one of those horseshoe clips. It's just it's a very small elbow, but you wouldn't be able to get to that, that retainer clip until you got the type top pipe out. So go ahead and get that out and then you'll have both pipes out and the Y pipe will be free. All right, it's almost time to take the Y pipe out. So if you reach back down to where these sensors are, can be a little bit hard to see, but there is yet another one of those wire clamps that goes around the main end of the Y pipe here. So you're gonna to wanna to reach in and loosen that. You can get it partially from above, you know, one of those arms from above. Then you're gonna put the car back in the air, find those two remaining 10 millimeters that are on the bottom. They should be in the matching places that were on the top. So with that Y clip or with that clip undone and those extra two bolts out, then you can walk the Y pipe out. Okay, so looking at the bottom, this is looking at the passenger side. You can see one of, the, one of the two bolts there, the other one right there. And then if you look upwards right here, you can see the bottom side of that clip that you're going to want to walk off. So then it'll be loose. Then you can reach up and walk the entire Y pipe out. So go ahead and get that done. All right, so once you have, you've pulled the Y pipe out, which you can see here, we're gonna have to crawl back underneath because there's an elbow there underneath that's really hard to see from the top. It, it's gonna have one of those clips on it again. We're gonna pull the clip and pull off the elbow off of the intake plenum. All right, looking here from underneath now, you can see that elbow. You can see the arms of the clip at the top. So go ahead and release the clip and push it outwards. And then you can take this elbow off the, off the bottom and set it aside. Once you have the elbow off, you should see that there's that black throttle body adapter right here with three T30s around the perimeter. So go ahead and carefully take those out. You'll probably need a wrench and a long extension. But go ahead and take that off. And that is the last of the OEM pieces to come off. And now we get started on the new upgrades. All right, so now we're getting to the point where we start to transfer things from the original pipe to the new. So this is a T20. You've got a screw right here. So go ahead and take out your map sensor. I find it's easier if you take this out first um, and it allows you to get to the temperature sensor a little bit more easily. So go ahead and just take this out, set it carefully aside. And then this is a 17 millimeter uh, fitting on this to take this out. It's pretty loose already. So go ahead and take that the rest of the way out. So when you transfer this, you just screw this directly into the new pipe and it, it goes in with uh, 16 foot-pounds of torque. Get that in. And then go ahead and put your, your map sensor in place. There, there is a new bolt that goes with it, so go ahead and use the new bolt because that's metal into metal. So go ahead and get that set. Now, these grommets, you're gonna wanna put on all of your grommets. So you wanna take out the metal core right in the center. And your main pipe, your main Y pipe, has four of these grommet fittings, so you're just gonna take it and fit the, the rubber fitting into, into place. And once that into place, you press the metal through on what's gonna be the bolt side because it kind of acts like a washer, right? So make sure that, that you have the metal fitting on the correct side. Same thing goes for the top turbo pipe. So it goes through on the top right here. So you're gonna, 
you're going to put the fitting in and, and put the, the metal plate through this. So go ahead and get all of your sensors transferred, get your fittings in, they're going to crawl back underneath the car. Before we install the intake boot, you're going to want to pull out this spacer right here. This is 17 millimeter. Go ahead and take that spacer out and install the longer one provided by Mishimoto because you're going to need to get a little bit of extra space here. So go ahead and get that in place. Now come over back to the throttle body, make sure you look up there and you see that orange gasket, make sure that it's seated correctly and go ahead and take the new Mishimoto uh, provided throttle body and put that on with the OEM uh, T20 bolts. So torque down to about six pounds, which is uh, about 18 Newton meters. Pretty much you can tighten by hand. Make sure you tighten it down evenly, so don't crank down on one side and, and then do the other two because it could sit a little unevenly. So snug them all down evenly as you torque those down. So go ahead and get the new throttle body on, go ahead and get that new extension on, and then also you're gonna want the short of the new uh, Mishimoto pipes, and we're gonna be putting that on next. All right, so now that you have the uh, new throttle body adapter put on, um, and like I said, roughly six Newton meters on those T20 screws. Go ahead and put uh, the new big elbow on. One side is three inches, one side is three and a half. You wanna put the three inch side, the shorter side up on the throttle body adapter. Go ahead and put one of the hose clamps on it first. I find that it's in this orientation, kind of facing the passenger tire. I can uh, get better uh, grip on it. I've also tightened it down just a little bit to, so I don't have to tighten as much when it's up in place. Don't tighten it down fully, just, just snug the pipe up on the adapter, get the hose clamp in place, and then snug it down just enough uh, to keep it in place for now. And then we're gonna go back up to the top of the car. Okay, so let's install the new rear turbo pipe. Whenever you're installing these with these kind of horseshoe clips, you wanna make sure that you pull them out a little bit and when they get into place, there's an audible click. That, that really shows that they've locked into place. You can always pull on it a little bit too, just to make sure. Make sure you, hit, you have your grommet in with the shiny side up and that is gonna be on top of that flange down here uh, on the motor itself. You don't put the bolt in yet and then we're gonna grab the other uh, fitting and we're gonna put that on, but we'll do that in just a second. Again, same thing with these with this wire clip. You can back it off a little bit before you put it into place. Slide it in, get the clip in, make sure that it clicks in and it's solid and it's good to go. And at that point, go ahead and go over and grab your Y pipe and we're gonna install that next. All right, so it's time to install the new Y pipe. So go ahead and fit this down into place and fit it onto your intake boot that you've installed over there. Make sure that you put the other big worm drive just onto the boot loose for now. Uh, but go ahead and fit this down in and make sure that the boot fits on really snugly here onto the pipe and, and just can get this set into place. After that, we're going to be installing the two other pipes, but go ahead and get this in place for now. Okay, so let's get the turbo pipes on now. So we want to put the lower one on first, which is the front turbo. So I find these pipes can be really sticky. So there are times that if, if I have to, I'll just take a little bit of oil and just very lightly put a coating on, on either side and it really helps them slide on. Because if not, you could really be fighting these pipes. So go ahead and put on uh, your worm clamps, your smaller worm clamps. Don't tighten them down yet, but go ahead and put on the lower one and then the upper one and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. All right, so as you can see, the pipes are in place. I've got the worm clamps here just in position. They're not tightened down at all at either end. So the longer one goes to the bottom, that's the rear turbo. The shorter one goes to the front turbo. Make sure that it fits on securely under your new gray Mishimoto adapter here at this end. And then you can go ahead and put both of the top 10 millimeter bolts for your Y pipe here and here back in, and you can put in your rear turbo inlet pipe here as well. Um, those are uh, seven foot pounds or 10 Newton meters. So just snug. Uh, if you can't get a torque wrench on them, uh, just, just get them snug. All right, y'all, so now that those uh, three bolts are in, you can start to tighten everything down. So make sure that all of your rubber hoses are over that ridge, over that bead ridge on all of the pipes. If they are, you can start to tighten down the hose clamps. So one, two, three, I could get from above. The bottom one down here uh, for the short pipe for the front turbo, I'll get to from underneath. Same thing on the hose clamps, one, two, on the big boot back on that side, I'll get to them from underneath. Once you put the car back up in the air, you can also put in the two bottom 10 millimeter there and there, and they go in at 10 Newton meters. So go ahead and snug those down. So go ahead and get all of your hose clamps all tightened down, get, get the rest of your bolts in, and we'll move on. All right, back here at the top of the car. So go ahead and uh, plug your temperature sensor back in and your map sensor on the Y-pipe. Get those locked into place. Make sure those, those little white collars get snapped back down. 
Go ahead and reconnect. If you, if you disconnected any hoses from your water pump, go ahead and reconnect those. Make sure they snap back into place properly. And then uh, pull it back down in and put that nut back on. It's seven Newton meters. It's basically just snug tight with a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, so go ahead and get that all, all set back into place. All right, so next up, so you go ahead and put your V-brace back in. These are those 16 millimeter bolts and they're gonna go in at 56 Newton meters. So you can just take it and just fit it in by hand as a start. And make sure that you have it in the correct orientation as well. Remember that the top here, let me just get this set in here. Remember that this flat side should be facing out because that's, that, that's where that brace attaches to that flat side. Okay, so go ahead and get both of those bolts in and torque down to 56 Newton meters. All right, so once you have that all done, so go ahead and grab your fan shroud. We're gonna slide this back into place. Just slide it back down in. It fits, it fits down into grooves. So you'll be able to get this set in really nicely. We've got some hoses. You've got to work it past as, as you go. But just get it Tetris back into place. Make sure to plug that back in here with its big connection. And then you can put that cover back over the top of the three T30s. One, two, and then three right here. So go ahead and get that all set, up, set back up. All right, so now you want to reconnect the rest of your radiator hoses. You can also use a little bit of coolant to lubricate uh, the gaskets on the inside to make sure that, that they're going to click on really easily. So you can start just pretty much anywhere. Just click this back, start to click these back into place. And make sure that when you, when you put these on, you get a good click just like that. So now it doesn't come off. You actually hear it click into place. So we've got the connection there. We've got the upper radiator here, which is really stiff by comparison. Good click. This mid connection, these two branching ones there, good click there. And we're gonna get a good click here as well. Just like that. Go ahead and get your lower radiator hose over here. And then also you can reattach your overflow back of the tank, back into your clips across the top, and here to the top, to the top of your radiator. All right, so now you're going to want to reinstall your main support bar, and you're going to want to do two things. Set it into place, but also go ahead and grab the V of your engine brace, because we're going to put both 13 millimeter uh, bolts in just snug to make sure that it's all lined up properly. So I've just laid this in at either end. It's not secured with the nuts at either end, but it's enough to make sure that this is lined up really nicely. So go ahead and put both 13 millimeters in here and get this to, to get them just snug and set. All right, so once you have the center set, you can take these E18s and you can, you can place them here on the outside. We're not gonna torque them down yet, so go ahead and just get them in, kind of hand tight for now. Remember, we marked these earlier, so we can get them recentered really nicely when we torque them down. But go ahead and just get these set. I noticed that I have to move them just a little bit seemingly to center them, but that will matter even more once I line up to my pencil marks. So go ahead and get that set in. And then you want to put one, two, three, four. Go ahead and put your T30s back here, uh, securing your hood locks uh, or your hood latches uh, to your support bar. All right, so once those are in, you want to snug down these bolts, 56 Newton meters, just like that. And same thing on the outside on these E18s. So go ahead and get those done. Your T30s are like seven Newton meters, so they're basically just hand tight. So all four of those hand tight. All right, get that done. All right, so now we want to reinstall the radiator brace. This would be a great time to upgrade it if you were going to do that. I'm going to regret not having an upgrade of this right now. Slide it underneath your hood cables and slide it down into place. Now, don't forget, you have one, two, three, four of those like pop rivets, those plastic expanding rivets. So as you fit this down, you may end up having to pull the nose kind of up and back a little bit to get this to fit back down into place. It was a little bit of a wiggle to get it out before. So settle it back down into place and then go ahead and put those six 13 millimeters, one, two, three, four, five, six, back across the top. Set and you have these bolts in place. You can put the four uh, T T40s back in, one, two, three, four. You can put the five T30s, one, two, three, four, five, back in place. These are torqued down to 28 Newton meters all the way around. So go ahead and get those all nice and secure. And then you can clip your hood pull back into place after that. All right, so now you can reinstall your intakes. Now keep in mind, I have the MST intakes, so they're a little bit different. If you have the OEM, you're gonna fit it back down into place, fit those, fit those feet on, and clip it down over your intake on each side. So go ahead and reinstall the right and left intakes. I'm gonna reinstall my MSTs on both sides. 
um, which includes uh, screwing them into place. So it's a little bit different, but go ahead and get your intakes reinstalled and we're gonna move on. All right, so if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and take this plastic trim piece, fit it back into place. Keep in mind, it's got little fingers that go, go underneath these little center uh, plastic arms here. So you just kind of press down on them and go in. There's one, two, three, four pop rivets. Go ahead and put all those back in. Just, just simply just push them into place and press. So once you have all that done, Go ahead and put this, your head seal gasket back on. It just goes all the way around. It should only go kind of one direction because it's curved uh, just from being on the car. So I usually just, just even it up on both sides, find about an even measurement because it goes underneath the, the front uh, quarter panel just a smidge. So I, I just even it up on both sides and you put it down over this track right here in the center. So go ahead and get that all sealed down and then go ahead and take your engine cover. Go ahead and take that and set it back into place as well. Just like that, and we're almost done. All right, so before we put the cross brace on, uh, just double check everything, make sure you don't have anything unplugged, all your fittings are in and good. Uh, I don't have the top plastics on yet, of course, because of the way the uh, M2, that plastic comes down over the top of the bolts a little bit. Um, in addition, make sure to check this. If you unplug this to help get your intake in and out, make sure it's plugged back in. But really do a quick walkthrough to make sure you're not missing anything in your setup and you don't have anything left unplugged, any clips undone and the like. If not, go ahead and put your engine brace back on, whether it's the OEM or in my case, the keys brace. All right, so one last check here at the top before we crawl back underneath the car. So make sure all of your, your plastics are back on. Now keep in mind, this is 56 Newton meters and the nuts are 28 Newton meters. Now this bolt is 56 plus 90, which means it's a stretch bolt. Now BMW suggests replacing it. Um, I've seen people replace it or not. So that's up to you, but get all your plastics all down, get those plastic expanding rivets in those, those push rivets all set, get everything tied up here up top. Now we're gonna crawl underneath and we're gonna install the stiffening plate. And in the M2 case, at least I've found those four bolts out at the very ends of the wings, right? In the G80s frequently are uh, 21 millimeter bolts. In this case, I've got 16s all the way around. Um, I usually will attach the center bolts first, just like when we took it off. I'll suspend the plate up and I'll attach from underneath. I'll show you that when I get underneath the car. Now BMW also does recommend uh, replacing those bolts. Those are 56 Newton meters plus 90, which means they're stretch. So you could potentially replace them all. I've seen a lot of people reuse them. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so let's get the car back in the air and let's get the stiffening plate on. All right, so here underneath the car, you can tell I've got the stiffening plate on partially. I've got two of the center bolts on very, very loosely because I want it to be able to move. You don't want to tighten it down yet because you want to be able to shift it around to get it in place, especially those wings out at the far end. Okay, so you just fit it back up into place, hold it there. I'm gonna put all of the rest of the 16s in all the way around. Once I've got them all in and I feel like they're threading in cleanly, they're not, the, the plate isn't misaligned at all, then I will start to tighten them down and then torque them down to 56 Newton meters. Also, while you're here, make sure that any coolant hoses you pulled from underneath um, are reconnected and you get a good solid click, which means the hose is on. Pull on them a little bit to make sure, but go ahead and check that. Go ahead and get your stiffening plate on and then we're gonna put on all the underbody plastics. All right, y'all, so the plastic is all buttoned up. All of your 10 millimeter screws should be gone. Now, one quick hint, if you're using quick jacks like me, two of the screws on the very back of those, of those wings, those plastic wings are very hard to get to. So what you can do is you can put it back on the ground and then use a standard floor jack to get it up in the air on the jack pad and you can easily get to those two screws to put them back. So I actually have four screws left over right now because I'm gonna put them on after I get the car down off the quick jacks, all right? But that should be it. There should be no plastics left, no other screws left. You should be good to go. All right, so go ahead and clean up and put your tools away. And this is a big project, no doubt, but this is an important one depending on the build of your car. You move away from those potentially fragile plastic pipes and heat and plastic never makes sense to me at all. And Mishimoto makes an absolutely fantastic product. I got these from Keys Motorsports. They're fantastic people. Make sure to check them out and the link for everything you need will be in the video description below. Now, if you're asking yourself, did you forget something? <laughs> I didn't, and you might be able to hear it running in the background. 
So you actually have to add coolant back to your car and bleed the system. Now, the best way to do it is if you have a vacuum bleed system, which means you're gonna need an air compressor and a, and a vacuum bleed unit. If you don't have that, you can potentially do it with the car itself. It just takes a little bit longer and it takes some patience. So if you read in the video description, you'll see the exact steps that you need to do to get your car into the mode that's gonna cycle all of your coolant and get all that air out. You're gonna, you're gonna have to top it off, run it, check it again, top it off, run it, check it again. I'm on like my fourth pass and I just added a little bit so I think it's really close to being done. Okay, so make sure to check out, don't forget that, all right? Don't drive your car without coolant. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Please make sure to click like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I would honestly really appreciate it. Plus, you get notifications for all of the cool content I have coming on my G87 M2 build, other cars, new car reviews, you name it. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you on my next project.